Welcome to BizTax HPAC Cybersecurity Show. Every week we update the region on the latest threats and incidences to help you protect yourselves better. Now, today is a special show where my regular co-host Benjamin Ang, who's the head of cyber and homeland defense at the Center of Excellence for the National Security at the NTU. Now he's going to give us some key takeaways around the global US cybersecurity conference that was recently concluded uh, in New York. Now, Ben, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Brian. Glad to be back after I got over my jet lag. Yes, okay. And, and Ben, this conference, share some details about it and what were the key objectives? This is actually the United Nations Open-Ended Working Group. The initials are OEWG, so I'll use OEWG from now on, okay. which is a working group on the security and use of ICTs, Info Communication Technologies. And it's a series of meetings that's being held from 2021 to 2025 at the United Nations headquarters in New York. And this the okay. most recent one concluded in March uh, 6th to 10th. And okay. it's... Hmm? Go ahead, please. Yeah, and one of the key things that they're working on is to kind of find a common understanding of how international law and international humanitarian law applies in cyberspace, which is the laws of how countries are supposed to behave towards each other in cyber operations. In the physical world, if there's a conflict, you know that you can't bomb a hospital or bomb a power plant because those are civilian spaces. But in cyber world, there's no such official rule that you cannot cyber attack a hospital and knock it out. So that's something that needs to be decided and agreed between the nations. That's interesting. Um, on that point alone, what was the conclusion for that particular point? Well, unfortunately, um, I have to end in, so I'm just, this spoiler alert, right? This is not something that's being solved very quickly. Because even though all the countries agree that international law, in theory, should apply, they have a definite split down the center of those who want to have on one side a legally binding treaty that's Russia, China, Iran, Syria, Cuba and then the other side those who say we can just interpret the existing law based on circumstances which is US, UK, Europe, Australia, Canada. Okay, why the divergence in the, the, the interpretation and the execution suggestions? There are many political reasons why these two blocks of countries don't agree. We can, just by naming them, you already can see that there are yes, a whole lot of things they won't agree on. On the specific things, if we just take the treaty thing, Russia, China, Iran, Syria, Cuba would like a treaty to cover the flow of information, not just cyber attacks. And of okay. course, the Western countries say, no, no, we must have freedom of speech. On the other hand... So that, that's an ideological difference that cannot be bridged. Much. Yeah. We're still under the current geopolitical situation. So while we're trying to come up with some rules on cyber, uh, in the meantime, states are still stepping up and before they speak, they then condemn Russia for the you know invasion of Ukraine and condemn Russia for the use of cyber attacks. And then Russia then condemns them for condemning them. And, you know, it's not ideal in terms of trying to reach a consensus. So there was also an issue around not allowing certain um vendors uh microsoft being one of them to participate in this which seems rather odd given that they are in the forefront of actually protecting uh, uh organizations uh, uh and bodies from cyber attack that is one of the big issues in this whole issue because the oewg very uniquely the chair who is ambassador Bohan Gafu of singapore opened it so that the non-government stakeholders could also participate. And this is actually not that common in UN processes, which are normally just countries representing mm -hmm. themselves. So because he recognized that the non-government stakeholders like the big tech companies or even the academic institutions, uh, NGOs, have a lot to contribute to the discussion to help increase people's understanding and awareness, he set up a process. Unfortunately, um, this process, in order to, to assuage everybody's uh, concerns, allows countries to veto. And some countries vetoed Microsoft. 
and several other uh, the, the I think the foundation for um, uh, incident response teams was also vetoed. So Microsoft has been labeled by Russia as a political organization. Okay. Uh, you know, Russia and Microsoft don't don't agree on many things uh, because of the Ukraine. So we need more of the tech companies to step up and, you know, uh, apply to come to this talk, to give that tech perspective that the diplomats need to hear. Okay, and so that's interesting because Singapore is a home to quite a number of cybersecurity tech companies in the forefront of uh, uh, the, the cybersecurity, uh, or companies like Acronis, for example, uh, which, which is obviously uh, based in Singapore, but uh, uh, of originally Russian descent. Uh, the, the founder is originally of Russian descent. So it'd be interesting to see, as you, you pointed out, um, that more companies should apply to actually participate in this process. Now, Ben, bef- with that in mind then, what were the key takeaways from the two weeks? Well, I, we observed that a lot more of the small countries were speaking up, which didn't happen in the previous meetings of this nature. So it's not just this two big blocks of big countries that are actually interested in this now. Remember, there's 193 UN member states and most of them are small countries and many of the small countries are speaking up and saying, we need to find a solution. So basically, there is now political will to say, yes, you know, sure, you guys don't agree, you big guys don't agree, but the rest of us, we want to find a solution on how these rules can be made. And one of the things that we are proposing is that on the non-government level, we can have these discussions without the politics. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's, that's a way forward. In fact, there was a one-day workshop uh, that the UN conducted where we were able to get Russian, Chinese, US, European academics to all speak and to give their views because they're all academics. And Okay. Yeah. So then, Ben, what's the next step after this? So those are the key, key takeaways. What are the next steps from this? How does there this more move forward? How does this up. impact all of us? More meetings coming up and more opportunities starting from July and then end of the year, probably around December, for more non-government stakeholders, i.e. tech companies who are watching this, to apply, to attend, and to give inputs, to give views, to, to give information that can be useful for the discussions. So that Okay, the, so, uh, so Ben, then, I, I, I hate to interrupt you, but then how, if I'm a large tech company and I want to be involved in this process, how do I do that? What do I need to do? The UN Open-Ended Working Group on the State Use of ICT has a website where there's a process for applying to attend. Or hit me up. <laughs> DM me and I'll tell you how. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what we'll do is we're going to put this on our uh, uh, a post on LinkedIn so that any companies that want to get involved, uh, Ben, we'll put the links down there. And even before that, whether you're actually going to turn up at the UN or not, we are planning to have more discussions at what is called the track two. International relations, people call it track two, non-government discussions, so that we can get people from all the different sides to share how they think they can come to a solution without the politics. And then, so that we can then propose this to the diplomats when we get to the actual meeting. So, hope to have more participation from industry. Okay, on that note then, Ben, thank you very much for coming on the show today. Thank you, Brian. Now, we've been speaking to Benjamin Ang, Head of Cyber and Homeland Defense at the Center of Excellence for National Security at the NTU on BizTech's Asia-Pacific Cybersecurity Show. I'm Brian Fernandez. This interview will be on our website, www.biztech.asia, as well as our social media platforms. It'll also be on our syndication partners, TV stations, radio stations, and websites. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Mm-hmm.